What's up guys, Tom here back at again with another video. Today we'll be covering the topic of some Sabre metrics and advanced stats within the game of baseball. So it's come to my attention that some people that are watching this video are unaware of some stats that I use in my videos frequently. So I wanted to break that down for you guys today. The stats I'll be covering are war, WOBA, and FIP. I got most of my facts from Fangraph articles and other websites online. I'll leave the links to those down in the description. Also, I want to give a shout out to Jake from Simple Saber Metrics, who makes great videos about Saber Metrics and also technology that is used within the game of baseball today. So make sure to go check him out. Link will be in the description. Before we hop into the video, I wanted to talk about the little YouTube shorts experiment I had making that minute long vertical video. I guess it got some pretty good views and took off. So, you know, I think I'll be posting one of those a week along with try to make one of my normal length videos uh, once a week as well. So let's get into the video. When we're talking about advanced stats or saber metrics in baseball, we wanna start thinking in terms of runs and wins because it's very simple. At the end of the day, the goal for the offense is to score more runs and the goal of defense is to prevent runs. The first stat we'll be talking about today is WAR, which stands for wins above replacement. This stat measures a player's value in all aspects of the game and it attempts to measure how many more wins a player is worth than a replacement level player. This stat should be used in a way to group players into different tiers or caliber of players because it is not a super precise estimate. For example, a player with a war of 5 and a player with a war of 5.2 are basically the same caliber of player and the player with a lower war might actually be better at hitting than the player with a war of 5.2. So you gotta take it with a grain of salt because you gotta remember that at the end of the day, this is a stat that tries to capture the whole picture and you gotta take a deeper dive into the stats of the player to get the full picture. So now I'll show you the different tiers of players based off of their war. This is from Fangraphs. They have a zero to one war player being a scrub. I think that's kind of harsh. Like if you're playing in the MLB, you're obviously not a scrub, but in terms of the league, I guess you'd be considered a scrub. Moving on, we got the role players that have a war of one to two. And then after that, you have your solid players, everyday starters who have a two to three war. And then out of those players that are good, which are the good players have a war of three to four typically. Now you're getting into that all-star territory where guys have a war of four to five. After that, you got your superstars, your franchise guys and they have a war of between five and six. And then at the very, very cream of the crop, top of the league, you got your MVPs, your MVP candidates who will typically have a war of over six in a full season. So this is the equation for war for position players. As you can see, you got the batting runs, you got base running runs, and you got fielding runs. All of these are calculations made with different equations and plugged into this war equation. Next, we have the positional adjustment, which tries to even out the playing field for all the positions. Not all positions are created equally and some are definitely harder than others. The league adjustment part of the equation simply adjusts how difficult the league was that year. And then finally at the end you have the replacement runs which basically sets the bar or sets the standard for what a replacement level player was that year. So you add all these numbers together, divide it by the runs per win, and then wham, you got your war. For pitchers, it is a little more complicated. So if you're interested in finding out what the equation for war is for a pitcher, I'll send you over to my guy, Jake. He especially does a great job covering the topic of war more in depth. So I'll put the link to his video down in the description. We'll now move on to an offensive stat and talk about WOBA. WOBA stands for weighted on base average. It is a catch all stat and measures a hitter's overall offensive value. So you may be wondering why WOBA is better than the normal triple slash line, the batting average, on base percentage and slugging percentage and even OPS. Well, that is because WOBA attaches a weight or value to each outcome a hitter can have proportionate to its actual run value. So I'll show the equation and 
it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks a little intimidating and daunting at first, but let me break it down for you. Also, I want to add before breaking it down that these weight values change year to year. So every year they change a little bit, but there's websites like Fangraph that show you all the constants for WOBA and other statistics as well. So as you can see with the numbers and coefficients attached to each of the outcomes, a double has a higher chance of scoring a run than a single, and then a triple has more value than a double, and then a home run has more value than a triple for run production. So as you can see, different outcomes have different amount of value to actually producing runs. You multiply all those constants with the player's stats from that year and then divide it by at-bats plus unintentional walks plus sacrifice flies and hit by pitches and then wham, there you go, got your WOBA. The last statistic I wanna to cover today is FIP, which stands for Fielding Independent Pitching. This stat is used to gauge a pitcher's performance on the mound. It looks at things that the pitcher can actually control, which are home runs, strikeouts, walks and hit by pitches unlike era and whip the defense isn't a factor at all in fit it's not fair to judge a pitcher because of how good or bad their defense actually is it is best to use this stat with a full season's worth of stats because in a small sample size it can fluctuate quite a bit so watch out for that this is good news for all of you guys who are just learning about saber metrics and advanced stats fip is the same scale as era so if you already know what a good era is a good fip will be just about the same so a sub 4 era is genuinely above average and then as you get into the sub three ERAs. Now you're getting into really, really good territory. They're probably really stud pitchers on the bump. And that's the same thing for FIP. If you have a sub four FIP, you're probably above average. And then if you have a sub three FIP, you're probably doing very well. So as you can see from the equations, home runs are heavily penalized. Um, and then you got walks and hit by pitches that are also penalized. And then you got strikeouts that uh, reward the pitcher. So you take all of the home runs, walks, hit by pitches, and strikeouts combined, divided by the amount of innings pitch, and you add that to the FIP constant for that specific season. Like WOBA, the constants change every year, and on places like Fangraphs, they'll display each year's constants for all of the equations for WOBA and FIP. I hope I did a good job of describing it i tried to think out how it would make sense to people that don't understand it or are just getting into statistics of baseball let me know if you have any questions down in the comments i'll gladly answer them make sure to like and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching the video i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next video Perfect.